In this video, we're going to look at differentiation. Differential calculus is the area of mathematics which considers the rate at which things change. So for if, if you have any function y, and typically we would have our equations written as y is equal to y equals mx plus c, for example, as equation of a straight line, y equals x squared plus 2x plus 4 would be a quadratic, y equals x cubed plus 5x plus 9 would be a cubic, and so on. So typically we have a function in uh, y, which is in terms of x. So for any function y, the procedure of finding, and we call this dy by dx, this is called differentiating y with respect to x. So if you here uh, see it written down, differentiate y with respect to x, it means you really, you define dy by dx. When we're looking to differentiate any algebraic function, we apply these simple rules. So if you have, first of all, your function must be in index form. So if it's in the form a, x, to the power of n. So for example, if I had uh, here, if we had this being uh, 5, y is equal to, sorry, 5x squared, then here, what happens to get your dy by dx, your uh, derivative, as you could call it, what you do is you multiply by the power, so that n comes down and multiplies, and you reduce the power by 1. So here in this example, our y was equal to 5x squared. So dy by dx multiplied by the power. The 2 comes down and multiplies that 5 to give you 10. And then your x is now to the power of 1. So you could just write that as 10x. Okay. It also says here the derivative of a constant is always 0. So I'll squeeze in a wee example here for this one. So if you imagine... I'm going to write y is equal to, and we'll say 7. You could have written that as y is equal to 7 to the power, 7x to the power of 0. Now, if we apply this rule to what I've just done, then dy by dx is going to be equal to the 0 multiplies the 7, so that's 0 times 7, and that x is now to the power of minus 1. Now, it doesn't really matter what the, that x is to the power of because you know that 0 times anything just gives you 0. So basically, when we have got, uh, when we have differentiated, um, sorry, when we've differentiated 7, y equals 7, you just get 0 as your result. Okay, I'm going to look at a couple more. I'm going to rub these out. I'm going to look at a couple more examples of why this happens uh, or why this uh, dy by dx happens to be uh, the case. Okay, we're just going to look at, at why you get what you get whenever you differentiate. So the first one I'm going to look at is one I've just done an example of, y equals 7. So I could write that as y equals 7 times x to the power of 0. That's really what that is in index form. And why that's the same, x to the power of 0 is just 1. So 7 times 1 is just 7. So y equals 7, x to the 0 is exactly the same as y equals 7. Now if you differentiate, and I'll just write down my rules for differentiating again, we have y equals ax to the power of n. And your dy by dx is equal to a times n, or I think we had written it the other way around this last time. Uh, we had, so we'll just keep the same. It was n times a x to the n minus 1. So remember, you multiply by the power, and you reduce the power by 1. So here, if we differentiate this thing, uh, we said, as we said before, that's just going to be 0 times 7x to the minus 1, which is just 0. Right, now let's look graphically at what y equals 7 looks like. There's your y-axis, there's your x-axis, there's your line y equals 7. So it's just a horizontal line. Now if you think about this line, what is a gradient anywhere on this line? So the, because this line is just the same all the way along, the gradient anywhere on this line is just 0, as it's a horizontal line. And we have found that when differentiate set y equals 7, you get 0. So what dy by dx is, and this is the most important thing about differentiating, what dy by dx gives you, it gives you a rate of change, but it also gives you, it is a gradient function. So dy by, dy by dx gives you a function which allows you to find the gradient at any point. Okay, right, I'm going to do the next one in a slightly different order. So we're going to look at the graph first, and you're going to tell me what the gradient is, and then we're going to think, well, how does our dy by dx work? So if I have my graph y equals, 7, or y equals 7x, 
y equals 7x, think back to your old y equals mx plus c. m is your gradient, and c was your intercept. I'll just abbreviate those, obviously. So m was the gradient, and c was the intercept. So on our line, there is no plus c. That means it, it's just 0. So it must go through 0 on the y-axis, or else, the or, i.e. the origin. And the 7 is the gradient. So here, if I was to draw this line, uh, it's going to be a fairly steep line. Well, use your imagination. That's a fairly steep line, which has, that's y equals 7x, and the gradient is 7. Okay, right. Let's see if that works if we actually differentiate it. So y is equal to 7x. Just give that x a power, and the power of that x is 1, not 0. The power of that x is 1. If you differentiate them, dy by dx, using your rules of differentiation we had above, that's going to be 1 times 7 times x to the power of 0. And 1 times 7 is just 7. x to the power of 0 is just 1, so it is just 7. So we have shown, if you differentiate this, y equals 7x, you just get 7. Okay, uh, last one we're going to look at, I guess then we're going to go back to our proper notes. And again, I'm going to sketch my, whoop, that's not too bad. I'm going to sketch my quadratic graph. This, use your imagination there that that goes through the origin. There's my origin. Uh, that's my curve y equals x squared. Now, unlike the, the previous two examples, here my gradient would have been the same all the way along. And here my gradient would have been the same all the way along. Uh, in this one, if I just change the color of my pen, uh, in this one, it's a wee bit different. Now why it's different is if I pick this point here, for example, the, gra the gradient of that curve, you can see, is negative. It's going downwards. Whereas if I go along to another point way up here, my gradient is going vertically. It's not going vertically. It's going upwards. So it's a positive gradient. So it would have a negative gradient here, and it would have a positive gradient over that side. So that means the gradient function is for this curve is changing as you move along. So it's going to be negative, and then down here at the bottom, it's actually going to be horizontal. It's going to be zero, which is a very important thing, which we will talk about later on. And then it goes positive again. So if I just get back to my blue color here, uh, if then we were to differentiate our y equals x squared and see what we get. Okay, your dy by dx, Multiply by your power, so that 2 comes down and multiplies, and then reduce your power, reduce your power by 1, so it goes down to uh, x to the, 2 x to the power 1, which is just 2x. So this thing is now our gradient function. So the gradient function for the original curve, y equals x squared, is dy by dx equals 2x. Okay, I'm just going to pick a couple of points here and see if this works. I'm going to pick a point up here, I'm going to pick x equals 10. And down here, I'll go for x equals minus 5. So how we could set this out is say when x equals, we'll do the minus 1 first, x equals minus 5, dy by dx equals 2 times, because it, remember it was 2 times x was your gradient function, or your dy by dx. So it's 2 times minus 5, which is minus 10. So we've shown whenever your x value is minus 5, your gradient is minus 10 and it's what which is negative and here you can see even from this very very basic sketch um, when x equals minus 5 it is going to have a negative gradient okay let's see about uh, this one over here we'll do the when x equals 10 so when x equals 10 uh, when x equals 10 at the point when x equals 10 uh, we'll find our dy by dx so we already know dy by dx equals 2x. So dy by dx equals 2 times, instead of x, write 10, which is 20. And you can see uh, my gradient is going to be positive. And you can see the further I go to the right, the bigger a number it's going to be. So the more extreme the gradient is going to get. Okay, we'll just pause the video there and I'll get back to our original notes. Okay, it says for functions including more than one term, so for example, x7, x to the 4, plus 3x squared, plus x plus 3, we just differentiate each term separately. So you differentiate this bit, you differentiate this bit, you differentiate this bit, differentiate this bit, and put it all together. So, uh, and it also says a little algebraic manipulation is sometimes required before uh, differentiation can take place. So we'll see that when, uh, whenever we come to it. 
So in these examples, it says find dy by dx. So you've got uh, six or seven of these to do. Very easy if you just remember the rules. So remember, y was equal to, sorry, y was, if y is equal to a x to the power of m, then we said that dy by dx is equal to m times your a and your x is now to the power of n minus 1. So again, the way you will remember this is you multiply by the power and you reduce the power by 1. Okay, so for a, uh, we've read the question written down, but you can just jump to the right the answer. Always write down dy by dx. Big thing people do wrong is not writing down dy by dx. So if you were just to write down uh, this, which is a very common thing for people to do. Don't know why this isn't rubbing out here. Apologies. Sorry, I'll just jump into this one to explain this because it won't seem to rub out for me here. Uh, here, if I was just to differentiate and differentiate this one and say that is 3x squared, this is not, this line is not correct because what you're saying here is absolute nonsense. You're saying y equals x cubed, which is the same as 3x squared, which is nonsense. So to make part b correct, you've got to say dy by dx equals 3x squared. So we'll go back to our first example. You're you had your y is equal to x squared, dy by dx then is going to be equal to, reduce your power by 1, and multiply by your power, sorry, and reduce your power by 1, so it's 2 upon x to the power of 1, which is the same as just 2x. Okay, part b, I'll just go through how we did this one. You multiply by your power, and you reduce your power by 1, so it comes 3 upon x squared. Part c, dead easy for us again, dy by dx is equal to, Multiply by your power and reduce your power by 1, so it becomes 4 upon x cubed. Okay, uh, part, uh, part D. Very easy again. It just looks more complicated because you've got two things, but again, we're just set in the notes to uh, differentiate, them, differentiate them term by term. First one is x cubed. Differentiate it. You will get 3x squared. Differentiate this x to the power 7. You'll get 7 x to the power of 6 and remember that was minus so it's minus here once you differentiate okay on to part e differentiate each term so multiply it the 4 comes down that's going to become uh, just 4 sorry it's not going to become 4 at all i do not know why this eraser is not does not seem to be working for me here today Let's see if i can try it this way that's okay Okay, so you're multiplying by your uh, 4. 4 comes down, multiplies the 2, it becomes 8. Uh, so that's going to be 8x. The power gets reduced by 1, so 8x cubed. Okay, next thing we've got to do is differentiate the minus 3. Minus 3 is just a constant. It says in your notes earlier on up here, the derivative of a constant is always 0. So here, you don't have to write in take away 0. That's fine. That is it done. Uh, okay. Last one of this one, differentiate. Uh, we have a long function here. The 2x to the power 5, well, the 5 multiplies first to give you 10, and then that's x to the power 4. The th next one, the power of 3 multiplies, that becomes 3 times 3, which is 9, times x squared, and then minus 2, x gets differentiated, gives you minus 2, and then the 7 gets differentiated, and that just gives you 0, and that's it done. So that's it correct. Okay, uh, last one for us to do for this video, we're just going to do this one. So first thing you'd want to do here uh, to say get in index form first. Okay, so at the minute we are not in index form. At the minute we're not in index form. So what we have to do first of all is multiply out our bracket. So multiply the brackets, you're going to have 2x upon 7x squared is going to be 14x cubed. 2x times minus 9 is minus 18x. And you're now good to go. You're ready to differentiate. So if you differentiate, you're going to get 14 times the 3 is going to give you 42x then. And reduce the power, it comes down to x squared. And then 18x differentiated gives you 18. So it was minus 18x, so it's minus 18. Okay, you are now ready to do exercise 
6a and that we will see you in the next video.